Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. I decided to do a video answering some of the questions that people ask me in regards how to safeguard your house against wasps. How to avoid getting these massive nests built inside of your walls, inside your ceiling, inside your basement, wherever, even the ones outside. So I'm gonna go over some tips and tricks here to help you guys safeguard your homes against having an infestation and avoid having to call someone like me to have to come and remove a massive nest, cutting holes in your house and stuff. So here's how to safeguard your house against wasps. So if you have an attic to your house, a place that wasps can actually get in is up through the attic, through the soffit. And how an attic actually works is you have a breathable material that allows air to transfer in and out of the attic to cool it down in the summertime and keep the air moving throughout pretty much all seasons. And what can happen is, is that these little tiny perforations and the holes that actually go where the uh, J channel is, um, that's a place that wasps can get in. So anytime there's a little hole, they can get in there, no matter what. Um, Big companies will boast saying that they will spray and keep wasps from getting in and don't waste your money. Just go around in the spring and just, if you start to see some activity in one spot, spray that spot because that'll keep them, deter them from going in and out of that area. So another place that people don't really think to look and to keep an eye out for during the springtime when nests are going to be starting is in their bushes and primarily evergreen trees, specifically like arborvitaes, um, pine trees, ever. Um, white pine, Douglas firs, um, any type of these like spruce trees, blue spruce, they are they will harbor spe specifically Polistes wasps. And these arborvitaes are just notorious. I don't know what it is about their leaves, but they attract Polistes wasps and I often will find um, them nesting within these, in these trees. I could probably find a couple in here. Uh, we'll take a look. So let's take a look up in this tree. Uh, yeah, so right up there. That's a Polistes wasp nest. I don't know if it's focusing very well on that. All right. So that's a Polistes wasp. And of course, there's kind of like a little bit of like a mall sack, but that's actually a praying mantis nest. That's an egg sack for a praying mantis. And up there, that's a guinea wasp nest. Right next to it is a type of mud dauber. Within the J channel, those are also areas where wasps will try to nest in the uh, springtime. You can see back in there, they can get in there anytime there's a hole. That's what she said. There's another Polistes wasp nest. Some more J channel. Anytime there's, there's just grooves, they can get in there. Anytime there's a hole to go through. And then down under here is another uh, guinea wasp nest along with... Uh, a mud dauber, pipe organ mud dauber. All right, another seemingly obvious spot is dryer vents. So if you have a house that has a dryer that has an external um, outlet to allow the air to come out, if any of these things get damaged or they start to look bent, get them replaced because wasps will find their way into your dryer vent. And that's a nice warm place for them to live throughout the, uh, throughout the summertime and even into the wintertime and potentially be a multi-season nest. I've had clients call me because their dryer vent um, had wasps coming in out of it and they were using their dryer and it was blowing air but it wasn't actually escaping so it was actually blowing back into the pipe so they weren't actually it actually could be a fire hazard so just keep an eye on that because you could potentially have a nest starting in here so just keep an eye on that in the springtime if you see any activity flying in and out get these fins replaced that keeps the bugs out so I had laid this stone wall a long time ago, and you can see I, I laid the stones pretty tight together. This is called a dry lay, and then I uh, pointed the top, meaning I put mortar in between the top joint. But the thing is, is that these can harbor, little cracks like this can harbor wasps. So if this is a dry laid wall that goes directly into an embankment, yellow jackets can fly in here and find a, well, the queen yellow jacket can fly in here in the springtime and find her way into either a cavity or start a little hole somewhere and make a massive nest into a retaining wall. Retaining walls are a huge haven for yellow jackets primarily. All right, so door frames. This is the bottom part of the door. And you can see here, this already has deteriorating wood. So this is gonna be a hole that can allow wasps to get in. This is block here. So the 
founding queen can find this hole and say, ooh, maybe find a passageway either further up into the wood and then into the block, and then you'll have a, a whole new set of problems. Same with over here. There's a crack here that goes against the wall, and wasps can easily find their way in and potentially start a nest in there. It's all about being proactive in the springtime, watching for that activity. If you start to see it, hit it right then and there, nip it in the bud. All right, so this might not seem like much here, but this is actually a mole mound, either mole or vole. And what this is, there's a hole under here. So if, the, if there happens to be a little tiny break in the surface, a founding queen can fly around the springtime and find her way into this cavity and start building one of those massive ground nests like you guys have seen me remove all from this. So let's just kind of like peel this open and see what we find. All right. So just like that, you can see that this is a hole. See that? So moles will dig these tunnels, abandon them, and then in the springtime, founding queen will turn that into her her new nest let's get this to focus there we go so all of my ground nests you've seen me dig up this is how they started they started out as a rodent hole and the queens dig them out and start their colony and then they turn into these massive nests so how do you safeguard against these get rid of the moles you won't have wasps it's as easy as that um, if you're having a hard time getting rid of the moles, um, go around in the springtime and keep an eye out for any time that the moles have popped holes out into the yard and cover them up. Mash down the, the mounds. You won't have a problem with the yellow jackets in the springtime throughout the summer. This kind of seems like an obvious one, but I'm going to say it is birdhouses. If you have a birdhouse, yeah, I built this one for my mom uh, a few years back. Um, got a wasp nest underneath of it up inside the roof line so even though it's not going to probably not be a yellow jacket nest per se depending on how big it is um, these can harbor polistes wasps and um, they can give you some grief so just keep an eye out for any activity in and out of here and that's how you safeguard against them typically in the summertime they're not birds aren't going to be nesting in these anyway so you could theoretically plug this up in the summer and towards the fall, you can open it back up so it allow the birds to go in to make their, their nests. Another obvious one is a hole in a tree. So we have no idea what's inside this tree. This tree could be hollow through here because at one point this was actually two different trees um, that were, had actually merged together. So when I was a kid, this was a massive hole and I used to peek through this. Well, now that it's grown together, this could be a cavity in here. So over time, bugs could get in there to that, that weakness and start chewing away at the outside of the, each individual tree and make a cavity. So this hole could easily harbor a hornet, primarily a European hornet, or even yellow jackets, depending on how adventurous they get and depending on how rotten it is on the inside. So anytime you see a hole like that in a tree and you're kind of nervous about maybe a queen starting a nest in there in the beginning of spring, plug it up. Use some silicone caulk or um, try to do something a little bit more organic um, if you can help it. So, you know, stuff it with a piece of wood or something, something that's going to be difficult for a queen to get in. She's not going to fight to get in there in the beginning of spring. She's going to look for easy access. All right, pipe organ mud daubers. Anytime you see these nests starting, break them down and usually deters the, uh, the wasp from building their nests there. But as you can see, there's quite a few of them down here, down the way. There's some old ones here. few there. We have to understand is that these aren't these colonies aren't aggressive. They are a solitary wasp. So they if they're on your house they're really not doing you much harm. They do attack spiders and primarily the uh, orb weaving spiders. You can see this is quite a massive mound of them. So that, these actually haven't hatched yet. There's um there's still gonna be adults inside of there and then they'll break out in the beginning of spring. So I don't remove those. They're uh, they're good to have around. They they keep the spider population down. Um, just like anything, needs to be controlled. You let them do their thing. 
So I wanted to add just a little update on a couple queens that I have. They're German Yellow Jacket queens that I keep finding in my wood pile, which I'll show you some clips here. Um, but I also wanted to show you guys how I kind of tend to them and keep them going. So I'm going to show you guys some uh, shots of them, of how I found them. Um, I also have some bald faced hornet queens and just watching their flight patterns, I was able to slow them down in slow-mo shots. So I wanted to share that with you guys. All right, it's so coming in to dig in the uh, wood pile here. And I found a German yellow jacket queen. She's a little bit slow. She was just in a couple of these logs here. Just to show how they went to river. So I'll add her to the collection in the pill bottles. Oh, Taylor's. All right, well. Another queen meter way in. I get her capped in here. She's actually trying to sting the. I'll let her cool down in the music room with the other queens I have. I think this is the fifth one. She came out in the wood. Some of the wood I have drying up here. She must have been between the bark. So these are two different bald-faced hornet queens and a worker from the colony that I relocated behind my uh, house here. And there's some agave nectar in there that I was feeding them, and which they were loving. Um, but I did want to try to see adding a German yellow jacket queen and see how the different yellow jacket species relate to each other. Um, Bald-faced hornets are also a type of yellow jacket. They're not really a hornet. Um, so you see here, the, the one up at the top, uh, the one queen starts kind of going at the other German yellow jacket queen, but then like immediately starts getting sidetracked by the nectar on her on her hands um, or on her legs. Um, so they don't really seem like they attack each other, and they were together for quite a while in that tub, and they drank all the agave nectar, and they didn't really go after each other after that. Um, that was really just that one little brief moment when I first introduced them. So I guess the pheromones probably just got mixed in there and they probably didn't really have any uh, issues with each other then. These are two bald-faced hornet queens that I had in a tub and I was trying to save them for over the winter time and uh, so I could release them in the spring. So that was full speed. Now this is half speed. And this is just half speed. I think it's 120 frames a second. And so you see that they're pretty well slowed down. Their wings, you can actually see the individual beats of them, which is pretty cool. Um, but I wanted to see their flight pattern. I wanted to see how how their bodies act in flight. Of course, this is a small tub. So this is actually slowed down even further. This is like quarter speed. And I mean, I love seeing this. I mean, just seeing how their wings move. And you think about how fast that thing's move, those wings are beating. And they're doing the same motion back and forth, back and forth. And plus, once they get off the ground, their legs go out like that. And I just think about how when they land on people <laughs> to sting them, they're so prepared to do so by how their legs are positioned while they fly. So you got to get to see that little maneuver all over again. Um, this is a quarter speed again. So she's flying around inside of a tub that has a lid on it. So all the wind that her wings are making, it's pretty much just moving around her then, pushing her down, pushing her around. And... Um, and then, of course, bumping off the walls, you can hear her wings hitting the hitting the walls of the tub. Plus, she hits the the walls a couple times. Um, but it's just so neat to see how, in real time, how fast she's really moving, and how well she actually was able to fly in there, and and just the way her body moves. It's really, really wild, wild stuff.
Plus, I wanted to show you guys some shots of the squirrely squirrel eating some yellow jacket larva um, from a nest that I was giving him. Hey, squirrely squirrel. Hello, Humphrey. All right, guys, I hope this gives you some tips and ideas on how to safeguard your house against having a wasp infestation either in your attic, in your basement, in your walls, wherever, or even outside uh, in the ground for ground nests or in your bushes and trees and things. Like the saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. So if you keep an eye on your house and areas where you know there could be some compromised spots like holes in the soffit, things in the ceiling, in the walls, wherever, if you just keep an eye on those things and safeguard them as you start to see activity, you should have no problem. Um, it's the people who don't really pay attention. They're going in their daily life. They're going to work. They're coming home at nighttime. They're not really paying attention to what's going on outside. And then out of nowhere, they start seeing yellow jackets coming through their walls, which is 99.9% .9 of my clients who had no idea that there was a wasp nest there because they weren't looking. They weren't safeguarding their house. So 
Don't spend thousands of dollars on companies to come out and spray your house every spring or whatever. It's a waste of money. Just keep an eye on your own house. Keep an eye on things where there's activity. You'll know when you start to have a wasp problem. You'll know early enough that you can handle it yourself. It's when you don't pay attention to what's going on at your house and then all of a sudden you're inundated with wasps inside your living room, in your bedroom, in your bathroom, in your kids' room, wherever. So just follow these tips and you should be good. Guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you have suggestions for future videos, something you'd like to see me cover, also drop in the comments, let me know. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit the bell notification down below and that way you guys can get an update anytime I do post a video. But if you guys are continuing subscribers, thank you so much for tuning in to check out my videos, sharing, liking, commenting. I really appreciate all the feedback that you guys give me throughout each video that I do post. Alright guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one.